Hi, this is Bob Pellin, CTO Bob, and today I'll be looking at a Dell Power Edge. This is an R730. In the past, we've reviewed an R740. This is a slightly older model. Why would you go for a previous generation server, you ask me? Well, depending on what kind of applications you have, if you've got a limited budget, this might be the way to go. Most uh, companies or individuals who are using this in the lab will want something like this, a 7 series basically, when you want something larger. Uh, this is actually thicker. Uh, this is a 2U server and the reason you'd want a thicker machine as opposed to the 600s, for example the 630 or the 640 we've reviewed in the past, is to be able to fit more stuff in the back using the PCIe interfaces. Uh, so we'll take a look at why this one particularly got selected. So let's take a quick look around what you're getting in an R730. Now, first off, it's not only a 2U, but it is a two socket server, meaning that you've got two physical sockets for processors. In this case, you can put a variety of different processors. You need to uh, figure out what you need. Do you need more cores? Do you need more speed? That will decide uh, really how this server will behave and what kind of workloads it can handle. So let's take a very quick look in front before we talk about more specs. Uh, as you can tell, I've actually opened up uh, the base here. So this is a three and a half inch capable server. So we've got eight of these bays. And the way that works is when you purchase a drive from Dell, or if you're getting the server from Dell, of course, it already comes populated. If you're getting the server in the used market, for example, or uh, even from Dell and you wanna add more drives, when you order them from Dell, they will actually come with, get this out here. So they actually come with the caddy. This is what they call it, basically a bracket that goes in and you press here and you can just insert them. Now, if you just have a drive, you could also get on the aftermarket, um, basically just get the caddy itself. It should come with these screws. Uh, sometimes I, I know some people tell me they get the screws with the drives. I have not really seen that for a lot of, from a lot of manufacturers. Now, if you wanna use smaller SSD type of drives in here, you certainly can. If you select it to have three and a half inch bays like we have here, then what you will need is you will need a bracket that has an extra adapter in it. Basically all it is is this little extra piece of metal here that will hold your disc in place. So that's the way to do that. If you were to select the bays that hold the two and a halfs, then you could put a total of 16 in front. That's a lot of space and that's just for the front. You could also make do with the back for additional space if so required. It's very flexible. Think of it as a large Lego system and you can mix and match different things. So apart from that in the front, what you'll find are the typical things. You've got your on button, which is very small. And there's a button there that basically helps you to identify which server it is. It puts a light in the back. Not terribly useful if you're not in a host environment with multiple servers. You've got a VGA, so you can plug in a screen. Again, if you're in a rack environment, you need to plug in. You come in, plug in a screen that's potentially on a cart, and uh, you could then use the USBs there to plug in a keyboard and a mouse. The details on the server, the, the serial number and so forth, are on the little tab here, in case anybody's wondering. So you pull this out and you get to see the QR code and other things. And that's pretty much it for the front. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps us and consider subscribing. Now, this particular machine, like we said, has two sockets. What can you put in there? Well, these are the E5s. So you could put like a 26XX uh, all the way to version four. Uh, that means that you could potentially have uh, gigahertz wise, if you wanted to have fewer cores, you could go up to um, 3.5 gigahertz, for example, or you could go up to uh, six, uh, actually, I believe 18 cores per, per processor. And uh, so that certainly gives you a lot of uh, bang for the buck. Now, if you wanted to also have uh, a lot of memory to go with a lot of cores, well, you're going to find that there's 24 slots for DIMMs in here. These are DDR4 2133s, 
And since you can put 32 gigs per slot, well, you can go all the way to 700 and uh, let me see what it is, 768 uh, gigs of RAM in this unit. So that's a lot. If you've got a lot of virtual machines, you're running VMware ESXi, for example, then you could have a lot of uh, smaller VMs running, lots of RAM, lots of cores. It allows you the flexibility. Now, with all this, you've got the space, the memory, and the processor. The nice thing with all this real estate, it's actually going go ahead and open it up. And I'll show you the back later on is the back here. So in this case, what we've done is we've got a GPU in here. So if you're using artificial intelligence uh, for, for coding, for prototyping, for any of those things, uh, you could go ahead and put your cards in the back. As you can tell, you've got additional power. Uh, they are limited to some degree. This is not a gaming machine. This is not something that you can necessarily uh, you know, mix and match completely at random. Uh, there are some Dell approved GPUs that you can put in here. This one, for example, uh, is a NVIDIA K80. You can put a K10, a K20, and of course you could put dual in there. And all this will of course need additional power. So make sure that your power supplies are selected and sized appropriately. The other thing that you'll notice here, just since it's in front of me, are the fans. So these are uh, six fans. You can have some of these models can come with four. In this case, we've got six high powered fans. So the memory is under all this plastic here. I'm not going to take it apart exceptionally, but I'm going to go and show you what is in the back of the unit. So let's go ahead and spin this around. All right, so here's the unit from the back. So first thing you'll notice are the power supplies. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, the big thing with the power supplies from Dell and HP and a few other brands are also the same is they're quite easy to put in and take out. So at any time, if one breaks, you simply pull it out, put in a new one, plop it in. As soon as you put in the cable, it will go ahead and turn this green and off it goes. This is 700. 50 watts, you can get 1,100. You could also get 1,600 watts, I believe, on this unit. Of course, you could go smaller. I think the smallest that I've seen are 495 watts. And of course, the more cores, the bigger the processors, the more memory you have, and especially if you have GPUs, you need additional power. So make sure not to underestimate how much power you'll need. So as you can tell, the GPU here has proper ventilation. It does take up two slots. Underneath it, you'll find the networking side of the business. So we've got four gigabit ports there. You could, of course, use 10 gigabit ports. This is basically a, a, a board that is put on there that uh, when you order it, especially if it's from Dell, you could tailor what you want from there. If you want a Broadcom or you want an Intel, they will swap that out and put exactly what you need. Of course, if you're using fiber, you could also swap those out to make use of fiber. Now you've got a couple of the typical things that you saw in the front. You've got a couple of USBs and a VGA. And the other interesting part is completely on this side where you've got yourself the iDRAC port. What that is, is the iDRAC 8. In this case, we've got an enterprise version in here and it allows you to configure the machine remotely. It's basically, think of it as a computer in the computer. So even if it's powered down, I mean, as long as there is power to it, uh, you can go through the, uh, the iDRAC and configure things like RAID, uh, maybe reconfigure the RAID, format the drives, uh, so you can change things, uh, monitor the hardware and so forth. That's what that's there for. Uh, primarily, if you're in a rack mounted environment, so if you have racks and you have a lot of systems, the iDRAC is very important and I certainly suggest getting the enterprise. It's uh, very good as well to help out with uh, things uh, like upgrades and it's really there for the maintenance. But if you've got a lot of computers and they're remote, that will be tremendous uh, help to you in the future. So we hope this was helpful. Uh, you can visit us at uh, www.ctobob.com. Please leave comments below. We really enjoy those. And of course, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.